Hello, this is an assessment of an Ed Seiler Grand Piano made in 1908 or 1909, I think, and uh, one six five centimeters long, that's five foot six inches long. Uh, assessment to restore the piano for a client. So, first of all, let's zero in on the keys. That's a indicator very often of how much the piano has been used, especially if they're very yellow in the center and even dipped. But these are in very good condition, actually. A um, little bit yellowed here and there. There are unfortunately some chips here which we won't be able to repair very easily. They're on the front pass of the top and uh, we probably have to change those. Um, I don't think it's possible to fill those. That one we could take out that chip and probably fill it and disguise it pretty much and this one we could work on as well. So that wouldn't be so much of a problem. First of all looking at the cosmetics of the piano. Um, it's uh, very interesting to see the the, the pedals here. Sila, uh, very decorative pianos very often and that's really really pretty isn't it. A very very wide pedal box here, um, wider than average. Apparently my colleague says that the legs are very unstable so before I forget that needs sorting out there, um, not screwing in well. So also something I noticed and that is that the caster Cup, the, the, the casters here, there's this kind of metal, almost like kind of gothic um, decoration on here, which is interesting, and uh, on all, all of the legs there. So, as I say, Silo's a very interesting design sometimes here as well. There's a curve which you don't normally get on grand pianos, um, so that's pretty unique. I see that it's come from Aberdeen originally, the original seller, presumably the original seller. Um, very nice rosewood veneer on the front here. Let's have a look at the casework in general. This is square, like an American fall, which is again unusual for a German piano really. Uh, the music stands very attractive, I think that's typical Seiler. And uh, looking at the inside of the piano, it's very dusty and very dirty. It's around the side is reasonable condition, uh, so straight, quite a straight grain going that way instead of that way which you get on say Bechstein's generally and you get this on Bersendorf for quite a lot, this straight grain here. Again ro good rosewood, the legs are let's say a bit unstable but uh, quite tasteful really. Now looking around the other side it's less faded on this side so um, I don't know if we can get all the way around, this is in our storage unit um, for assessment. So the top of the piano, let's see if there's any uh, difference in colour here, no, I think it's been kept closed for a long time. Yes, it could do with a lot of improving here. This could do with repolishing really, um, but obviously the, that's expensive. Probably make good the case without repolishing it, uh, though it, there's parts here that we aren't going to be repairing, able to repair, and of course that colour we can't get rid of unless we repolish the whole piano. Now uh, the inside of the piano is very very dusty and the tuning pins are a bit rusty too. The strings as well have got quite a lot of rust on them but uh, they're all there. I think the general rule as we said before in many other videos that if all the strings are there then if you lubricate the pressure points um, that's here and, and then take the string down and up you, it's unlikely that you're going to break a string. Um, obviously it's very costly to break a bass string but uh, but it depends how tense they are. Let's listen to the. Yes, they're quite tense. I think that is a very fruity, beautiful sound. The Seiler, one of the best German makes, so we expect it to sound rich. It's very flat, by the way. Um, round here in the, in the center, there's A is about 20 beats flat, which is very, very flat. Now that one, when I first came across it, I thought there's something wrong with the piano, but someone's tested this one and raised the pitch of it. Um, but the whole piano, apart from that, is um, extremely flat. So more than a quarter tone flat. Um, nearly, as, not as far as a semitone, but not far off that. So very, very flat. And uh, the tuning pins are original. You can tell that, as we said before, very loose on this uh, medium star lever I've got here. And I've tested the pins. They are quite tight. Now the piano is very very dirty and I suspect it's been in store, store for storage for a long time. Um, as you can see there's the dirt there. It has got moth as we'll see in a minute so that's another factor. The Sila sculpted their soundboard here and um, that's uh, a very thoughtful firm really trying to get the best tone that they possibly can. There's a beautiful logo on the middle here on the decal but it's completely covered over by dust at the moment. 
the bridges are all in good order and there's no moth here on the top of the piano. The, the moth is actually in the felts on the front part of the action. It's got an extremely weak tone around here, which is to do with hammers um, almost entirely, I think. It's possibly slightly thin there. Some of the down brain may have got lost a bit, but nothing, not extraordinarily. So I think pitch raising it, I think it's, as it's been in store, store for a long time, there's an unknown quantity as to whether the, um, the piano will dry out, but I don't think it's got damp. It's, the action's quite fluid, so that's encouraging. It's moving well, and there's no sticky notes. We dated the piano from the, the number on the blocks here. There weren't, didn't seem to be any other numbers apart from on the blocks, um, but I did find a date as well on the on this here, and that's 27109, I think. So it's going to be earlier than that. So let's say, uh, to, let's say that's 1908 um, or so. It's probably about right. Um, it's obviously had some work done on it because somebody's put some chalk marks here. So some stage it's been worked on. Um, we mentioned to you earlier that there is some moth and there you can see it. I could tell when I press this down, it's lost its felt underneath. So that's one way of telling. The, another way of telling moth is if the keys are uneven and they're not. So there's probably not moth on the centre rail here, though they might have started nibbling at it. Um, and there's a bit of oxidisation of the leads there. I'll have to, to examine that when we get the keys out and see if any of how much oxidisation there is. But you can see there very, very huge amount of uh, moth eaten felt at the bottom there and um, going up it's less at the top end but a lot at the bottom end so that definitely needs replacing felt and checking treating for moth obviously as well just in case it's still there there's one broken uh, jack there as well the second to top was broken not there at all now looking at the action it's a good quality German action you can see a bit of moth has tried to attack the hammers as well, but I don't think it's damaged them too much. And the hammers themselves, we can see um, the this one's not really hitting. Uh, sorry, I think I've lost the focus a bit there. There we are. Um, you can see there, they're not all hitting on the centre. Some of them are missing the uh, right-hand string altogether. And that's why we had some weakness here, but also needs refacing. Um, so it's quite a lot of work to do on voicing them as well. I checked the action to see about regulation. The regulation is obviously needing doing generally. There's a lot of regulation to do on the piano. But if we, uh, this is a different type of mechanism here for the spring, which is quite interesting and um, needs, to be, needs to be adjusted. I just checked them as well. And uh, looking at the spring here, I've uh, just adjusted that one. So they do adjust well. That one, is, as you can see, they're all tending to go downwards. The, the checks are, there's plenty of felt left on the checks. Obviously, if we fully restore the piano, we change lots of felts. And this uh, this felt here um, is also damaged by moth. Here at the bottom in particular, you can see it's very, very moth-eaten. Uh, so there's quite a lot of work in replacing felts to do. The hinges are tight here, which is encouraging. and. Also, they're fluid, so as I say, it didn't seem to be have got damp at all. So that's that's also encouraging because it probably means it's not going to dry out um, when it gets into the client's house. So that's an assessment for restoration of a Sila Grand Piano made in about 1908 and uh, five foot six inches long, and it's very very flat. And all the strings are there. The underlying tone is reasonable I think though let down a lot by hammers at the moment I'm hoping that just by pitch raising and um, restoring the action really the, the touch by the way is a good touch weight it's uh, if any it's a bit low if anything it's about 45 uh, grams down weight which as 50 is normal so but that's nice if you're an occasional player not too heavy for play and uh, once it's regulated, I think it will f feel very respectable indeed. The key tops, unfortunately, some of them we won't be able to rescue. We'll have to change the, the top, top front part of the tops. Um, but uh, generally speaking, they're in good condition apart from that. 
So I hope that's been helpful. And if uh, once we finish restoring the piano, if we do get the commission to do so, then um, I'll try and make another video to show the end product and how it's transformed it.